I'd like to start by thanking Harry Winston for their support of the Tiny Dorm series and for their continued partnership with the school. Um, I'd also like to just give a special shout out to all the moms out there. I know it's Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. Um, and so I'd like to dedicate this concert to all of them, uh, including my own mother and my wife. We have a fantastic program tonight featuring the richest sounding and most versatile and the most valuable member of the string section, the viola. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce my friend and colleague, Dimitri Murat. Dimitri is the recipient of an Avery Fisher Career Grant and first prize winner of the prestigious Primrose International Viola Competition. In addition to being a member of the Viola Faculty at SFCM, Dimitri is also chair of the Chamber Music Program. Welcome, Dimitri. Are you there? Yes, yes. Hello. There we go. Here we go again. It's good to see you again. <laughs> good to see you again. I, I, I'm seeing you a lot suddenly. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Yeah. So we were talking before about um, the versatility of, of the viola, but also um, talking about the, the ages of the violas involved today. Uh, why don't you talk again about the, all the representation of the different uh, violas that we have today? Yes, so we, we really want to have a big viola party and, and show people from all ages can play the viola. So uh, we have our youngest performer today, uh, Colin Brashears. He's seven years old. We have another performer from the pre-college, uh, Sydney Whipple. Uh, she's at the other side of the, of the pre-college. She's just graduating from the pre-college. Uh, and then we have some students from the collegiate division. Uh, and finally, actually to end, we have a special guest, uh, Jonathan Vinacor, who is the principal viola from the San Francisco Symphony. So in that way, we have a big range. And uh, as you said before, we also have a big range of repertoire. Um, so yeah, we, uh, and speaking of that, I mean, you're, you have a very eclectic program tonight, speaking of rep, and uh, I thought maybe if you want to say something about the core talk that you're playing, Yes, so Kortag, George Kortag, he's a, he's a composer from Hungary. At first, he was more known as a, perhaps a, as a teacher or as a coach, chamber music coach. Um, he, he's renowned for working for hours and hours on maybe one line of a Beethoven string quartet. Um, and it's the, this attention to detail that he then would put in his own compositions. Um, so this piece, um, what I really love about it is that um, it really speaks. Uh, there's a lot of um, grammar and uh, in the time, the, the Hungarian style of grammar, where there is a, usually an emphasis on the first syllable um, and a lot of, there's a lot of beauty. It's called in nomine. So it's based on, um, on a sort of cantus firmus um, and that, that's called in nomine. There were a lot of pieces in the 16th century and then He's giving it a 21st century version because it's written, uh, what does it say, 2004. So it's very, very recent. So, well, I'm really looking forward to it, Dimitri. So I'll let you get going. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So um, the next person that we have today is uh, is Teresa. So is uh, Teresa? Are you here? Yes. Hi, Dimitri. Hi. Hi. So what are what are you playing today for us? I am playing um, La Cabanona by Paganini, um, Promos Edition, for everybody. Ah, so it's not the original violin. No, it's not. It's actually um, edited by Promos. Um, yeah, this is his edition for the viola. Okay, so yes. take it away. Thank you so much, Dimitri.
Prove that viola can do anything for me. I know. <laughs> I mean, virtuosity to cello singing. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. nice. Thank you. So, Teresa, did did you used to play the violin before? Yes, I was a violinist before I became a violist. Uh -huh. I was studying with both um, Mr. Ian Swanson and Miss Cordula Merks. Mm -hmm. So at the conservatory, and what? Yes. What made you change your mind or your heart about the the changing to the viola? That's a really good question. I think it has to do with the beautiful sound of the viola and the color and the tone. It's just so different and it's so singing voices. So I think it's just life has reached the point. I feel like I had to change and it's a beautiful instrument to play. Yes. yes. And so you, you study with, uh, with Jay Liu. Yes, and I do. What, what, is the, what is that like? Can, can you describe it? Yeah, I, I, I love studying with Jay. He's, he's, he's a great teacher, he's a great mentor, and he teaches a lot, uh, and I learn so much from him. And I think, the, I think the thing that he's most good at is teaching excerpts, actually. So I learned both solo repertoire and excerpts repertoire with him. So that's been very helpful for my music career, I think. Yeah, so because you are, you are also probably preparing for some auditions for, yeah. for orchestra jobs. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And thank you again for this beautiful performance. Where, where are you right now, actually? I am at downtown San Francisco, actually. I live only one block away from our old dorm, Panoramic. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I am streaming from San Francisco. So you're kind of in the tiny next to the dorm concert. Yes, today. tiny yeah. dorm, tiny dorm, tiny apartment concert. OK. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. It was a great concert. Thank you so bravo. much. For yeah. Yeah. So the next performer that we have today um, is uh, Colin Colin Brashears, and uh, he's got uh, he's got some band with him, right? Colin, are you there? Yes. Ah, there you are. Yes. So what what is your your band called? Your backup band? The Stars Aligned Siblings. Ah, very nice. So those are all your brothers and sisters. 
Yeah. So, you, what are you going to play today? I will be playing the Talma Concerto for the viola second movement. Okay, great. Take it away. So you want to talk a little bit to us? Yes. Yeah. So, um, Colin, so your teacher is uh, Madeline Prager? Yes. Yeah. What are the lessons like with her? They're fun. And I, um, and I love to teach from her. It's fun. They're yeah. Fun. That's cool. And uh, how, how did you come to uh, pick the viola? Because I see your siblings, they play the violin and the cello. And why did you want to play the, the viola? Well, I wanted to play the viola because it had the C string and it had very low notes and they were nice to um, vibrate on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best reason, the C string, huh? the love of the C string. That's very good. So um, do you have other performance coming up? Many I could think of. Uh huh. Okay, but it's really nice that you get to have the the whole orchestra with you. You know, as violists, we don't get that many opportunities, but it's good that you already have some. So bravo again, and thank you for playing. And um, I'm sure we'll hear you m many more times. Huh? Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. So next uh, we have. Um, a performer from the collegiate division. Um, her name is Ali Simpson. Ali, are you with us? I am. Hi, how you doing? Ah, so where are you joining us from? Uh, San Francisco, California. 
Oh, very far away, yeah. Yeah, I know, exotic, right? <laughs> very exotic at this time, yeah. So um, um, do you want to play um, first and then we talk? Um, sure, yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to start with something that's not on the program because it's Mother's Day and I wanted to play something for my mom. Uh, she loves Ave Maria and it kind of reminds her of her mom. So I'm just going to start with that. Okay. You Do you want to play it all in one go, or should we talk after the Ave Maria? Or you? Yeah, let's let's. Uh, I'll play everything, and then we, and then we, and then we'll talk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So next I have um, the first and last movement of Rager's third suite for viola. Um, Rager might not be a name you necessarily recognize, but in his time he was called the second Bach, um, and he had this ability to combine incredible counterpoint with um, the lyricism of late uh, romantic, the late romantic era. So he was kind of an offshoot of both Bach and Wagner. So enjoy.
It's a pre-premiere, so it was written for me through the um, Gabriella Lena Frank Creative Academy of Music, um, and it's. I just want to read a few words uh, from the composer about the piece. Uh, so it was written in the time of COVID. Um, uh, as of this writing, the United States has seventy-seven thousand four hundred eighty-five deaths. Sir Bond was composed and premiered by Alexander Simpson as part of the Gabriella Elena Frank Creative Academy of Music gig through COVID series. So th this is the composer's words. I had in mind the beautiful slow movements from the Bach cello, solo cello and violin works. The classic Sarabande is a slow dance in three with an emphasis on the second beat. I did not intend to follow that model explicitly, but instead was led by my sense of the Sarabande, a stately, mournful, soulful dance and one that is, for me, ultimately hopeful. So here's Sarah Bond by Stephen Giuliani. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you, Ali. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And how exciting to get sort of a pre premiere of sorts. And I, um, when when are you hoping to premiere that piece? Is there a date um, in mind? So I the 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 premieres are kind of rolling. Um, so originally um, we had discussed premiering it on the fourteenth, but I I'm not sure exactly what the the date is for the the actual premiere. Right. But I will keep you. I'll let you know as soon as I know. We're, yeah, we're we're all looking forward to it. And thank you again for um, all the beautiful performances they provided tonight. And I uh, hope to see you around again soon. <laughs> thank okay? you. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. And uh, so before we move on to the program, I kind of want to bring back to the virtual stage here, uh, Dimitri. Dimitri, are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Great. Yeah. Yeah, so you know it's been a fantastic, really great program that we've had, and I think we really show the versatility of the of the instrument and the breadth of the repertoire. And uh, I'm really excited to see you know all these students, both the collegiate and the pre college students, um, see them perform live at some point soon. But also, you know what they're going to be go uh, what they're going to be moving on to in the near future. Uh, and I know that we've had you know recent alumni who've had some uh, a lot of great success, and I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit. Yes, yes. So. Uh... Um, in our recent group of alums, um, we, we've had quite a few um, principal, principal positions, uh, winners uh, for different orchestras. Um, so Genway, she got the Atlanta one and uh, Meredith uh, got the one in Dallas. Uh, and so I think it's, it speaks to, to the ability of our school, you know, like Teresa also mentioned, you know, we have Jade Yu and Jonathan Vinicor also on the team. On the on the viola faculty who are teaching uh, those orchestra excerpts and um, I think we all collaborate with a lot of those students and uh, and make sure that they are completely ready for uh, the professional world out there. That's great, yeah. And you know, I mentioned this in my introduction of you uh, at the start of the show, but in addition to being a viola faculty member. You're also the chair of the chamber music program and um in the first concert of this sort of second part of our tiny dorm concert um you know we had the telegraph quartet hosting it and they had bonnie hampton as a special guest and you know bonnie is a, a member of the cello faculty but she was also the founder of the chamber music program um, and started that program and now you're in that position you know as overseeing the chamber music program and and i've always known and a lot of us you know in the classical music world have known about how um how well respected uh, you are as a chamber musician and how well known you are. And so it makes a lot of sense that you're running this program, but I wonder if you could really speak to um, why this program is so integral um, in such a big part of SFCM's curriculum and community. Yes, um, this program has a few things that are um, unique uh, about it in, in this country. You know, it started as the first program of its kind, first degree with a focus on chamber music uh, in the US. Um, but uh, it evolved and, and now what uh, is the possibility with it is that you can apply, of course it's good to apply as a chamber music group, but you may be one of those players that hasn't yet found the group that you wanna play with, uh, the players that you wanna um, really sort of get married with in terms of music making. Um, so you can apply for this program as an individual. And I think that, that is a great strength. Um, so if you do get into this program, you what, what happens, you get two chamber music groups with two hours of coachings a week. Um, so that means four hours of coachings a week. Uh, it doesn't stop there. We, we also, as faculty, we love to play with, uh, with the students. Uh, and so it's also getting um, for the students to get the experience of playing at the highest level by, by osmosis. Um, I like sometimes to describe it for, for, for some students who are, who are interested in it, that it's a little bit like a uh, Ravinia or Marlboro's festival, but spread over an entire year. Uh, so we have some, also some residencies by, by a really, some of the really world's greatest uh, chamber musicians. Uh, coming, spending a week with them, you know, over the last few years. We've, we have had uh, Kim Kashkashian, we've had, um, um, well, we have Marcy Rosen coming next year. Um, and um, we have some younger players like uh, Tessa Lark who came. Uh, so we, we really try to put the, the students in a, in a way that they, they see what it's like to make a living 
as a chamber musician, what kind of standard is expected? Yeah, that's that's really an amazing experience for students to be able to play with um, not just the guest artists that you mentioned, who are, are also really you know well-known names in chamber music, but with the faculty as well. You know, I yes, think uh, yes. some of the best learning experiences playing side by side. I, I have to say that for myself, you know, those those experiences, whether they were at festivals or or uh, when I what I was playing with with my teacher or something like that, really made a big difference to understanding what it's like to play at that level. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that, Dimitri. And uh, I'll let you continue with the program. But I really enjoy the conversation that we had. Thank you. Thank you, Hank. Great questions. Um, so what we're going to go on with now is uh, with Sydney, Sydney Whipple. Are, are you here, Sydney? Hi. Yeah. Ah, so Sydney, where are you joining us from? I'm in Oakland, California. OK, so you're closer to me because I'm in Orinda, so it's we're getting closer. Pretty close. Um, so what are you going to play for us today? I'll be playing uh, Bach Suite 5 Prelude. OK. Thank you. 
Bravo, Sydney. Thank you. That was a beautiful performance. Very moving. Thank you. Yeah. So, Sydney, you are you're now, how many years have you been at the pre-college? Uh, four, I think. Four years. Four years. So, so you're graduating high school? Yeah, I'll be going to college next year. Okay, where, where are you going? I'll be going to Juilliard. Okay, okay. Of course, I should know that. But so, but uh, did you win some big scholarship to be able to go there? Yeah, I got a Kovner fellow fellowship, um, which covers the whole cost of attendance at Juilliard. Well, congratulations. That's that's very good. And and you've worked a lot, a lot this last three four years. So it's it's been great. But it's also very natural that sometimes you you leave town to go to different horizons. Yeah, it, it was nice to hear you today and uh, I look forward to hearing you later again. Yeah. Thank you. Bravo again. So next uh, we have someone from much further than Oakland. Um, his name is Junting Wei. Are you here, Junting? Hi, hello. Junting, nice to see you. Where are you joining us from? Right now I'm in Taiwan and it's really hot day. <laughs> it's very hot weather there, huh? Yes. So that's why you have the AC on, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are you going to play for us today? Today I'm going to play In the Mist, Viola Sonata, written in 1937. Okay.
Thank you. Bravo, Jinting. No, oh, um, how? How is it like being in Taiwan right now? Right now it's pretty hot summer and it's really safe. People are still walking around. <laughs> uh huh. So there you don't have to quarantine. But did you have to go through quarantine when you came when you came back? Yes, I've have been quarantined for fourteen days when mm -hmm. I came back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I was hoping for your cat to appear because I see some cat shaped pillows behind you, but uh Oh yeah, because my my father is a vet so we have some animal stuff. <laughs> ah, that's why the theme, yeah. Yes. Well it was really nice to hear you and beautiful playing. Thank um you. and enjoy your morning, right? It's morning there. Yeah, it's pretty early right now. <laughs> well thank you for getting up so early for us. Thank you, thank you so much. So now the last guest we have tonight, um, last but far from uh, least, in fact, our really great guest today, uh, is Jonathan, Jonathan Vinicor. Are you there, Jonathan? Hello. Hi. So you're joining us from San Francisco, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, you are so principal viola at the symphony. Uh, and you're also teaching, of course, at our school. Um, and, um, well, I want to say where we met, which was at a chain music festival. And we also studied with the same teacher with Kim Kashkashian. So we, I remember asking you about where to live in Boston when I moved there. And I, I forgot if I asked you the same question when I moved here, but it's very nice that we're again in the same. same stop following me. <laughs> yes, I should stop that. Yeah. Um, so, but today you're, you're playing a Britain elegy. Right. And um, did you want to talk a little bit about why you picked that piece? Sure. Um, well, I, had, I have known about the piece for a little bit. Uh, I've never played it before, but I love Britain. And also knowing that he was a violist a bit, um, I was very curious about the piece. And then <clears throat> I started practicing it you know, a few weeks ago and noticed in the, in the notes before the piece that he actually wrote it after leaving uh, a school he had been attending uh, at the age 16. And um, it's, a, it's, it's titled Elegy. I don't know if he actually titled it that himself, but, um, but he did write at the time that he was surprised at how sad he was to leave the school um, because it seems that it was a school that he didn't particularly love, but he was really you know missing the other students basically. And so that got me thinking that this would be an appropriate piece to play on this series, um, I, I mean, I, I'm a father of a preschooler, so I see through him and I imagine it's similar, although at a more mature level <laughs> for all of the uh, conservatory students, you know, how hard it is to be without his peers. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's why I'm playing it. Okay. Well, thank you for playing. Um, I'll uh, come, I'll listen now. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Bravo. Jonathan, I couldn't think of a more fitting piece for this moment. It really captures the mood. Yeah, I'm sorry to end on a downer, but... No, it, and what a beautiful sound, beautiful colors. Oh, I, I, I could go on, but uh, we, I, I wanted to ask you a few questions. Sure. So um, first one is, um, you know, of course, um, there's a lot of uncertainties, but uh, still, Esa Pekka Salonen, he's, he's coming. So uh, how, how do you feel about uh, his uh, arrival here? Uh, I'm going to kneel down so you can hear me better. Um, I am very excited about it in a, in a nutshell. Uh, I haven't actually played with him very many times. I've kind of missed some of his recent weeks, but um, but his the music making I have experienced with him has been really great. Uh, I, I, he is a composer and I think he approaches the scores as as a composer does, you know, really just trying to suss out what is it that the composer is after here and really trying to, um, but in terms of thinking about the effect, you know, realizing that what is on the page is not a true representation of what the composer had in their mind and then trying to transcend that. I think he's really quite good at that. Um, and, and he will bring a, like a different sort of discipline to the orchestra, which, which will be great. Um, you know, we have our sound and he'll just kind of tweak it in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's great. And uh, what about, um, you know, you, you've had a very versatile, is, is, uh, is your son about to come? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you've had a very versatile career. Um, with both chamber music and and um, solo and and of course orchestra principal, so what do you have any advice that you can give to to students or young players to you know for their career? Sure. Um, yeah, I would say that <clears throat> I think a lot of us, when we're young, have a certain vision for what it is that we want to do, um, and I think it's always been the case, but certainly these days, uh, you know, picking one career choice like I'm going to be in an orchestra does not mean that you um, can't do those other things. Um, and actually, I mean, when I was in school, I was definitely thinking um, chamber music as, as a main focus. Um, and then I sort of realized like, well, you know, if you're in an orchestra and maybe especially if you're principal, you have a little extra time and also um, maybe some more opportunities. Um, to do chamber music and and that's that's kind of I mean I also love playing in orchestra but um, this this position of being principal viola allows me to do some of everything which which I really like yeah um, and teaching also you know so I guess your advice would be that you 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 want to not hold yourself to just one path but yeah. keep a lot of options open yes. Which I mean to bring it back to to our school, it's I think one of the strengths that we have is that we 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 are able to give people a very wide variety of experiences, uh, right. from chain music to solo and of course orchestra. Um, yeah, it's I think the school traditionally has this great chamber music focus, and is now developing a little more emphasis on the orchestral side as well, which is it's very healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, well, thank you so much for playing again and for talking yeah. to us today. Um, I, I just wanted to say it was yeah. lovely to hear, uh, as the last performer, I, I just got to enjoy and be inspired by everybody uh, throughout the concert and uh, through across all age levels, um, you know, pre-college, faculty, of course, and collegiate, just everybody was inspiring. Yeah, we got a real viola community going on here, yeah. so it's really nice. And um, and I should also, well, thank you, but also thanks to to Jay Liu and to Madeline, who who are not on the on the call today, but but who really helped prepare their students Teresa and, and Colin for today. And so that the, the four of us we are the sort of the Viola team currently on the faculty. Um, so again, thank you. Um, and so we have just a few final uh, things to, to to say. The first one is again to thank uh, Harry Winston for their support in uh, making these Tiny Dome concerts possible uh, and also to join us tomorrow for an evening of uh, leader and arias uh, by the uh, the vocal 
department, uh, department the voice department. Uh, that will be at 5 p.m. tomorrow, Monday, uh, same place on, uh, on the streaming. And, um, and now I would like to uh, get everyone to come back uh, with their videos and, uh, and we'll say a nice, we'll wave you goodbye and thank you for being such a great audience today. And um, thank you for, for playing. <laughs>